Okay, so we have a book review by the Love Inspired Large Print Series, The Rancher's Return by Carol Carolyn Arson. I wish I had this book with me, but it's on loan right now, so I'm sorry. But it's called Home on the Ranch. And the Bible verse they share with us tonight is, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Psalms 91 2. Now, in this book, it has the characters of Carter Beck. Emma Minton, Adam, which is Emma's little boy, and Anna Beck. Carter, he's a widower who has lost not only his wife, but he lost his little boy. And he comes back to the Rockin' K Ranch, uh, to, not to home to stay where he should, but he wants to sell it. Now, Emma, she's a worker on the ranch, come to live there with her little boy. And, um... She's a horse trainer, more or less, hired on by Nana Beck. And Nana's become quite fond of both of the, Nana and Emma. And uh, the only real home he's ever really known, all his childhood memories, along with memories of his late wife and death of his little boy, belong on that ranch that he wants to sell, Mr. Carter, that is, the Rockin' K Ranch. But upon entering the ranch, he meets Emma Minton, the horse trainer hired by his grandma, and Emma's agenda is just to find a stable job and a place to raise her own little boy, Adam. Throughout the book, their faith is tested. Carter moves away from the ranch and his family and builds that, that his family has literally built from the ground up. And just trying to keep forget about his past. He doesn't want anything to do with his past. And he wants to forget love. He doesn't even want to know that emotion. He wants to just forget his late wife. And Emily's and her son Harry, he uh, le learns to let people in slowly so the pain will ease as he shares some of his uh, burdens. Speaking on a personal note, knowing friends and family have put their thoughts and prayers in me and my throughout, throughout my weight and for other reasons, I, I know what when you try to block out emotions, you can't do it. And you know, you can try and be the strongest person in the world and you're still going to have weak days and get knocked down. But it's the people who are there who can pick up the pieces with you that count. I say thank you, and I pray that you know that you have a friend in me, or a family member in me, if you're in a time of need. Emma's been hurt by Adam's dad, Carl. He just left her as soon as he found out she was going to have their little son, Adam. Her father gambled away their ranch, leaving her and Adam with nothing. Her old boyfriend cheated on her, but over time, through faith in God and learning to trust in love again, the two realize that they have changed, and they end up getting engaged, a beautiful, touching story that illustrates faith, hope, and most importantly, love. Be sure to check that book out. Next, we're going to try and get as many of these in that I can get in. Now, this one, I actually have the book with me, but it's going on loan tomorrow to my mother because I bragged about this book. There is two books in this here, okay? And it's called Christmas Gifts, Love Inspired. Now, again, uh, they do start off with the Bible verses, which there's the Bible verse. And this one is The Small Town Christmas by Gail Gamner Martin. And the Bible verse, you may... Have You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Acts 228. While this story was a little rough for me to read, and I'm proud to say I forged my way through the tears, and I made my fears go away. Amy Carroll, she's from Chicago, and she gets laid off of her teaching job and has no other option but to return home living with her grandparent grandma excuse me and she gets a job at this alcoma elementary school where she picks up a temporary teaching job right away she's tested by the school principal with two troublesome little girls holly and ivy while talking with the two little girls who obviously had some discipline issues the uh, t uh, principal goes out and lets the both little girls know that their dad is going to be coming 
Well, like any little kids, excuse me. They're they're like going, oh my gosh, our dad's on the way. So she sits down, Amy does, and she's talking to these two girls, right? Well, when their father arrives, their father knows instantly who Amy is, but Amy has no clue who he is. Well, he happens to remind her that where they met at her grandma's house and Ellie Carroll. And as they talk about the 11 years that ago that happened, she was 18, and he said he was 23, earning money as a handyman. Back then, her grandma Ellie notified her that Mike was newly married, and Amy kept reminding herself while talking with him that he was married. Out of bounds. So she politely left the situation by going home to her grandma. Now, I don't want to give away the rest of the book. I want to make you read it. So, uh, this basically, it's a Yuletide Christmas celebration tradition throughout the living, but not letting us forget about the past traditions that we had with loved ones. Mike and the twins lost a wife and a mother. It's a testament of endless love, yet knowing love opens doors again to new experiencing and new relationship. In order for Amy to not to go back to Chicago, she had to make a choice. And she left a lot in Chicago, yes. She left her friends, she left her job, she left her home place. But yet, when she chose to live with her grandma and Mike and the twins, she chose uh, her, the twins and her man. And God hears all our prayers. He knows what's in our hearts, what's weighing on our minds. Life is about choices. We all make each day and every day. Good, bad, or indifferent, we have to learn to live with them. Just know that the Lord opens the doors of love. And you choose your fate. And know that with this book review, I wish you nothing but faith, hope, and love. Now, let's see if I can get the last book review in. Whew, getting winded. And this one is Her Ca Christmas Cowboy by Brenda Minton. Again, this was a twofer in this book. I love this book. And uh, the Bible phrase, For God so loved the world that he gave us his own only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life john 316 elizabeth harden was jilted one week before her wedding she finds herself not in the caribbean but in tulsa oklahoma she keeps thinking about richard her former fiance who met a lady behind a perfume counter named tanya and he left elizabeth for this lady where he bought elizabeth's birthday gift now, I'm going to hit the high points because I want you to read this story as well. Elizabeth, uh, she has to go to Oklahoma for a business trip that her dad was supposed to go on because her parents are enjoying her honeymoon. So Elizabeth spots this bull rider at the rodeo she's attending, and she uh, is starting to walk uh, just away from the, the all the reporters that are trying to interview her. And she says, or, or she almost gets trampled by a bull, excuse me. But Travis saves her. And of course, as soon as, you know, he helps her off, get dusted off and everything, she thanks him politely and walks on. She asks somebody later on who he is. And of course, they tell her that he's a heartbreaker. Well, from that moment on, Miss Harden finds faith, hope, and love and beliefs in the Lord and also through him. Because she fights it so hard. She doesn't want to fall in love again. She's so scared. She's like a little scared rabbit. That she's been there. And she doesn't want to put her faith in anybody else. And she starts hearing voices from the back room saying. Because uh, she's at this. I, I want to say this was a Christmas gathering of some sort. Excuse me. I'm not probably getting it right. I'm trying to mash all these books together. So I'm sorry. But anyway. Um, she hears voices from the back room saying Travis would break her heart. Because she looked like someone who was wanting a wedding ring. And Travis had never had been in a long-term kind of guy. People always knew that he, people talked, she always knew not to listen. But maybe she needed a reminder that just weeks ago she'd been planning a wedding and another broken heart. And the last thing she needed that was that at Christmas. So scared, she returns home to St. Louis, an empty apartment. But she yet talks with a close neighbor who tells her basically, you're in love. Wake up. Meanwhile, Uncle Uri, who's uncle to Travis, 
He tells Travis to pray about it. You can't drag someone who into your life just because you want them there. If the relationship is what God has for you, then God will bring it all together. Well, to end the, of the book, Travis loved playing Santa for the less fortunate kids and as he was adopted himself. So he walks into this house where the kids are awaiting Santa. He doesn't disappoint. Santa gives a coat and toys to the children. Then he makes his way to the kitchen where that fabulous fresh chocolate chip cookie smell is going on only to find Mrs. Claus hard at work. He is so shocked to see Mrs. Claus because she gave up her life in St. Louis to be with her Mr. Claus. All in all, our heroine Elizabeth Harden knows about love and loss, knows about traditions as they are not always important. It's the faith that lies behind the traditions. Oh, that was a good book. Okay. Well, there's our faith and inspiration for this Sunday. I hope that I didn't preach to you too much, but it guided you a little bit, gave you some hope, gave you some faith, and most importantly, guided you towards love. I will be back next Sunday with some more inspirational moments. I do want to try and hit some songs. We'll see if that happens next. Take care. God bless.